So, uh, where exactly are we going? I'm yelling at Daisuke, hands cupped around my ears. Although he's right next to me, the deafening discord reverberating through the narrow, dimly lit tunnel renders us virtually deaf to one another. The mosh pit. Although he seems in a cheery enough mood, we can't help but feel a bit apprehensive of the fact that he has a wooden sword slid into his belt. He's also forced a thick bat into my hands. When I asked him what they were for, he just waved away, saying that we wouldn't need him. Still, he has left Boo at home and forced Randall to sit her until we come back. So I'm thinking that tonight's activities aren't really going to be of the family-friendly variety, huh? Push on through the din for another good 20 minutes. With each footstep, the noise gets progressively louder and the tunnel an inch narrower. However, just before my eardrums can pop, the tunnel suddenly expands diluting the ear-splitting sound waves to a much more tolerable level. We're here. It's a little more crowded than usual today. <laughs> no shit. We're in a huge, dimly lit room that's almost big enough to house most of the city. The people everywhere, dancing, drinking, and doing anything else that ends up a hair shy of a failed pregnancy test. Gangs of douches with the same spiky hairstyle strut around hoping to scoop up anything wedged into a skin-tight dress. Although the noise is much more bearable, the heat isn't. My face is soaking wet. Tremendous body heat, the thousands packed in here are letting off. It seems to have turned this cave into a freaking oven. I grimace, tying my hair back so my ears don't get turned into fritters. God damn, it's hot. You'll get used to it, come on. Dice kick grabs me by the hand and drags me off into the crowd. And shooting straight, I'm not exactly comfortable with holding hands with another dude, but it is extremely easy to get lost in this crowd. And since I don't exactly remember the way back to Dice Case Cave, and I sure as shit am not coughing up for a motel room, I just suck it up and hold tight. So, do people only really come here to watch fights? Nah. Bryce doesn't really have any places to socialize or anything, so instead people just come down here to party. Sometimes people even find an open space and start their own little scraps and betting pools. However, tonight's fight isn't some drunk dude banging it out. It's the Kangnam FC finale between Raphael Jacques and Jason Wan. They're both undefeated and they both hate each other. I swear, I, I wish you could have seen them at the weigh-ins. As we nudge our way through the party, he points at the large arena at the center of the colossal dance floor. Suddenly, I feel someone squeeze my cheek, and I do not mean my face. I turn around and see some dude winking at me. Oi, dude, what the fuck? Yeah, that slapped the smile off his face. Oh, sorry, I, I thought you were a chick. He disappears into a crowd of his friends who are roaring with laughter. I turn around to see the corner of Daisuke's mouth twitching. You could have at least returned the favor. <laughs> Shut up. Trying to adjust my hair into something slightly more masculine, but let's be honest. Whatever I do to my ponytail, the back of my head is still going to look like a horse's ass. Now, normally I would care about the jeering bitch face looks that I've been getting, especially considering the fact that I am definitely not used to the semi-bare-breasted, gyrating girls that seem to accompany such institutions of higher learning. However, even though I'm wading through a smoky-eyed and perfume-drenched mass of firm, writhing bodies, I'm surprised and more annoyed to find that I don't really seem to care. To my irritation, my thoughts are lingering on someone who hasn't been patting her bra and marinating in scented grease all afternoon. It's not the time, dumbass. Focus. We're here. The Mosh Pit Arena. I wouldn't have imagined something as ancient as this building could have stayed standing in the midst of such a crazy party, but fuck, it obviously has. Large torches illuminate the hundreds who've packed into the tiny coliseum. However, despite the crowd, Daisuke still seems to manage to find us a pair of decent seats. Damn it! We missed the prelims. He scowls, watching a couple of masked, hooded people scrubbing blood off the ring. Aside from the crimson staining the squared circle, I find the gimps even more discomforting. So, um, who are these guys supposed to be? The referees. Refs. And why are they... Dressed like creeps? The referees stay incognito to stop people from trying to buy them off. You know, keeps them impartial. 
the energy in the arena ignites. The bald Mr. Suit climbs into the ring and announces into the megaphone. And now, for the main event of the Gangnam Fighting Championship, introducing first the challenger, Jason the Chosen One. The arena goes electric. As the fans ignite into a frenzy of cheers and screams, the fighter and his team walk down the ramp towards the ring. Although it is clear that this guy, the chosen one, is the fan favorite, he pays his peeps no attention. He's too busy listening to his coaches, fiercely trying to cram in as much last minute advice before his scrap. So, uh, how often do people get hurt in this thing? Like, seriously, I mean, like, die, I mean. It's hard to say. I think the kickboxers cause the highest permanent injury rates, but the BJJ guys cause the highest mortality rates. Although it is alarming, I guess it makes sense. BJJ is essentially grappling with the opponent until they're unable to fight. Whether that's by dislocating their arm or just snapping their neck. I turn to Daisuke, feeling more and more uneasy about the whole thing. Fuck dude, this seems more like human cockfighting than a fucking sport. So Daisuke, are there any like rules to this thing? No biting, no scratching, groin shots, hair pulling, and any sort of bitch moves in general. He sees my apprehension and sniggers. Still want to fight in the local circuit? Suddenly, the crowd's cheers are replaced by violent hisses and boos. And now, Gundam FC's reigning, defending, undisputed champion, Rafael the Lumber Jack! Indifferent to his infamy, the champ walks out. Surrounded by his team that looks more like a gang of thugs than coaches or training partners. Fuck, oh, people really hate this guy. Why are they all booing him so much? It's because Jacques is a complete tool. Great fighter, probably the best there is, but an utter ass clown. Peanuts? This guy offers me a bag. Fuck it. I grab a handful and mutter a thanks. Still fixated on his posse, which is now curling, flipping off, even spitting into the crowd. And uh, what about those guys? Are they his coaches? They're his gang. Since there aren't any major syndicates in Bryce, Jacques' boys are probably the strongest pack of bullies over here. Especially with him leading them. Nobody likes that cocky asswipe, but he's one hell of a fighter. He killed more people in Bryce than Syphilis. His kicks... You'll see. The two fighters square off in the ring, inches from each other, their gloved hands balled into fists. The announcer leaves the ring, and the referee indicates for the two to touch gloves as a sign of sportsmanship. Juan ignores him, stonily glaring at his opponent, grinning. Jacques leans over and whispers something into his ear. Juan suddenly shoves him back, his stony mask cracked with fury. Jacques, on the other hand, just smirks and walks back into his corner, allowing the referee to start the fight. It is long and ladies and gentlemen, FC final is on the way! Jacques pulls him to the center of the ring, whereas his opponent seems to have taken a much more cautious approach of circling around him. As you can see, Chosen One is implementing his boxing pedigree right now, holding his hands high, chin down, but he is having some trouble establishing his range. The announcer's right. Every time Juan reaches for a jab, Jacques effortlessly torques his lead leg into a vicious leg kick. After a few attempts, Juan powers through the thunderous leg kick and lands a strong straight into his opponent's stomach. The crowd explodes in the thunderous applause. Juan tries to capitalize with a left hook, right uppercut combo, but Jacques dodges them and throws a combo of his own. And that's vintage shot for you, slicing his opponent with lightning quick elbows. Juan's forehead is gushing out blood, but before he can recover, Jacques clinches the back of his head and smashes him with a big knee. But when Juan breaks free, he looks badly hurt. He's trying to fight through it, but Jacques keeps twisting that tree trunk of a leg right into Juan's knees. It's over. Juan's legs are gone. This thing isn't going to last another round. Y yeah, but you said Juan's a boxer, right? He should be okay. Even in boxing, all your power is generated from your legs. His punches are a tenth of their normal power. His head movements are gone out the window. He's a sitting duck. Shit. Nice kid's right. Juan is freezing up, unsure of how to proceed. He's throwing wild punches, trying to keep his opponent at bay. Shock smells blood. He raises his leg as if throwing another low kick. Juan instinctively drops his hands, trying to catch him before he can chop his leg off. But Jacques never aimed at his leg. He fakes low and smashes his chin right into Juan's temple. Juan's hurt! Juan's hurt! Are you fucking kidding me? The crowd's gone deathly quiet. 
Only Jacques' raucous crew can be heard cheering their later on as he rains down heavy hands on his now unconscious opponent. This is over. This is fucking over. Jesus, fucking somebody stop this. The referee finally tears Jacques off his victim. It is all over. Lumber Jacques becomes the first person to finish the chosen one, extending his unblemished record of 46 and 0. Oh my god. He climbs into the ring, walks over the still unconscious, bloody mess. And asks Jacques. So, Lumber Jacques, how does it feel to be the first person to not only defeat Chosen One, but also do so in devastating fashion? Jacques looks down at his fallen opponent as his team carries him off on a stretcher and shrugs. I thought he would have put up more of a fight. Guess he was all hype. There, there seemed to be a lot of emotion going into this fight. What were you saying to Chosen One when you two were squaring off? He disrespected my crew. I can't let that fly. At this, Jacques' gang jumps into the ring and raises him on their shoulders. Nobody fucks with my boys. Shit. You can feel it, man. The hatred everybody in the arena has for Jacques. But he doesn't care. Because he can feel something else. The fear-driven respect everyone has for him and his gang. Yes, sir. Just, just one more question that I'll let you go and celebrate. How do you feel about being the only one who's qualified to represent Bryce at Bronx's baddest? About damn time. When I've beaten the best the Octagon has to offer, my crew will be acknowledged as the baddest SOBs in the country. Hey guys, we're from Daybreak Embrace. I'm James. This is Gian, and you're listening to SOB. We finally left the mosh pit, trekked through the tunnel, and entered Bryce's main cavern that houses the majority of the city. And although it's well past midnight, the shanty streets are still bustling with life. So what'd you think of the fight? This dice kid relishes the cool mountain air. I pulled the band off my hair with a satisfied sigh. Ah, never like tying my hair back. Maybe that was the only pleasant thing to come from this evening. Because, damn. Yeah, it was something. Look, man, I'm a boy and we all love a good throwdown, but f fuck me, man. That fight was brutal. It can get pretty sick. And that wasn't even one of the bloody ones. Sometimes the referee has to stop the fighters because one of them starts bleeding too badly. <laughs> uh, now I realize why Daisuke brought me to the fight. I guess you don't want to fight anymore, do you? Since he didn't want to object to managing the guy who just saved his son, he tried to show me the horrors of a real professional fight to buckle my resolve. <laughs> what gave you that idea? Look, <clears throat> look, Theo. I know you've got some solid BJJ, but dude, that can't cut it against fighters of that caliber. You said you wanted to fight to make real money. The fighters you'll have to face to do that are guys who've been training since before they could wipe their own asses. This is a stupid idea, Theo. Yeah, I know. This is a fucking idiotic idea. But we both know what I want. And it doesn't look like there's any other way we can get it. Fair enough. When has this shit ever been something we liked, huh? Yeah, ain't that the truth? Nice kid stopped walking. He looks at my resilience and tries to press me. You never even trained in striking. I, I cannot, in good conscience, manage you in doing this. You you'll get yourself killed. Yo. Yo, look at those three guys over there. Ah, uh, look familiar. Y yo, Dice K, those. Those, those three guys over there, do you know who they are? Um, yeah, they're part of Jack's game. I think they're his sparring partners. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, wow. So you're actually going to do this. So they must be good at boxing and stuff. Yeah, that tall guy Raiko, I think, he's supposed to be one of Jacques' best boxers. Why? Oh, 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 no, no reason. Actually, wait. 
I think I might know him. Before Daisuke can stop me, I dart off towards the group. My friend's calling after me, but I'm dead set. Oi, oi, you! Yeah, yeah, you motherfucker! I charge at Reiko. Daisuke grabs me by the car and tries to pull me back, but I'm violently fighting his threat, snarling at Reiko. Who the fuck do you think you are making a pass at my girl, huh? Daisuke hisses, holding me back. The people around me have the same idea, I'm starting to gather around, anticipating blood. But Reiko's alarm is just turning into annoyance. I'm gonna cave your skull in. The guy to his right growls, but I fling my bat at him, smashing it on the wall beside him. Are you fucking stupid? Just stay out of this. My beef's with your boy, Rico. Now, who the fuck do you think you are making a pass at my girl, huh? What are Shut you? up. You, me, day after tomorrow. Alright? Got it? Rico pauses for a moment, then sneers. <laughs> I'll kill you then. His friends look like they want to get a piece of me beforehand, but he stops them. Don't. This delusional little shit is mine. I give him one last menacing glare, and then let Daisuke pull me out of sight. What the fuck was that about? He looks at me, and sees the fury replaced by a grin. Uh, yeah, well, you said I've got no striking, right? So if I outstrike this guy, you'll manage me? Daisuke stares at me, mouth agape. You're completely mental. He's going to crush you. How the hell do you expect to fight better than him in 48 hours? Ooh, I don't know. Um, you know where I could find a good book on boxing? <laughs> Daisuke looks at me, dumbstruck, utterly speechless. I don't blame him, man. This is a fucking stupid idea. But in the absence of any good ones, it's my only one. You may have